last one for, for this week comes from Mr. X, who is an anonymous teacher. Mr. X. Mr. X. Dear Simon and the suppliers of salvation, that's you guys, I'm a secondary school teacher. It's kind of like an end of term. This is, uh, this is like an end of term confession. I think there might be some more. No, this is a bit of a shocker. I'm a secondary school teacher. My confession goes back a couple of years to June 2016, to a time when certain areas of the UK were experiencing long periods of heavy rainfall and flash flooding seemed to be the order of the day, which many people remember vividly. Us teachers are hard-working souls. There are lessons to meticulously plan, which then need to be delivered to up to 15 classes of different abilities and year groups. On top of this, there are exams to engage with, parents to placate, colleagues to care for, and marking to manage. And then, of course, there's Ofsted. The O word. On the particular day in question, we just had the dreaded call. Ofsted, would you to visit and inspect over the next two days? Oh, great. Suddenly, the workload became unmanageable. My classroom needed tidying, seating plans needed updating, student data needed printing and carefully storing into folders ready to hand to an inspector should they decide to visit one of my lessons during this day. Lesson plans needed photocopying and that huge pile of marking needed doing. How was I expected to cope? the end of the school day, after dismissing the students, I sat down to start ploughing my way through the huge pile of marking. I was never going to get through it all before the school gates were locked up for the day. I'd have to take it home with me. I could foresee a late night ahead. I should mention, mention Simon, that I absolutely detest marking. It's the worst part of the job. Tedious, repetitive, sometimes depressing to see that despite your best efforts, some students still haven't grasped what you've been trying to teach them. I think Mr X has got a downer on his job at the moment. At that particular moment, when I thought things couldn't get much worse, some of the classroom ceiling tiles fell down with a loud crash, narrowly missing my arm. And then I felt great splashes of cold water on my shoulder. Looking up, I could see water pouring in from above and right onto my desk. You see, it had been raining so hard all afternoon, still raining hard outside, and now it had started to rain hard inside as well. I remember thinking that it was a good job the water hadn't come in, let's say, a metre or so to the left. Otherwise, this whole box of student books <laughs> gotcha. would have got wet yeah. and they'd all have been ruined. I think you can join the dots here. Well, the books did get very wet. I have to tell you, they got completely soaking. In fact, they got totally unusable, ruined. In fact, they were so ruined that I was left with... Absolutely no choice <laughs> but to throw them in the bin and issue full class sets of new ones the very next day. Imagine that. All my students' books getting ruined so I couldn't mark them. It's amazing how luck can change with the smallest of nudges with your elbow, isn't it? <gasps> wow. So you see, I need to ask for, for forgiveness. Oh. But not from the school. After causing a leak in that area of the ceiling, the water started to come in over the door as well. Then it ran down the walls and into the electrical sockets. Luckily, the small fire which was started from the electrical shortage was put out almost immediately by the flood water itself. A shame then that I was so angrily reprimanded by the site supervisor when he came to investigate why I'd activated the fire alarm because according to him, it was only supposed to be used in emergencies. Needless to say, I left the school a month later. Neither do I seek forgiveness from Ofsted. They'd spent two days at my school, and despite my extremely thorough preparations, they couldn't even be bothered to observe any of my lessons. I mean... Anyway, I do, however, ask for forgiveness from the students whose work was unceremoniously soaked and then dumped in a bin for no reason other than my workload being far too heavy to mark them at the time. Although, to be fair, they don't usually use their books to do any revision for tests anyway, so I'm sure no one, no harm was done. Wow, Mr X really, really didn't like his workload or his marking. Anyway, thank you, Mr X. A very honest teacher confession. What do you think, Joe? So when Mr X says he left the school shortly afterwards, you sure didn't mean left the profession? Because this is not a man who enjoys his job at all. He no. doesn't like the kids, he doesn't like teaching them, he doesn't like anything about he it. He does start by saying, I am a secondary school teacher, so the... the the implication is he's still doing it. Somewhere. I'm glad he's not teaching my children. Yes. <laughs> I mean... How do you know he isn't? Oh, no. And I said Coco was really excited about her brand new teacher. That's, <gasps> there you go. It's Mr. Mr. X. X. Oh, no. And I said it was like X Factor. Really? <laughs> 
Anyway, yeah, it, this could be seen as being an opportunist, but I think it can also be seen that this is just a terrible, terrible thing to have done. So no, not forgiven. Yeah, I think people are going to be quite strict about this. Although teacher's workload, Bobby, is, is very, very hard. thing is, it's Mr X, like I really felt for you then. You're thinking, yeah, what are you going to do? And also, fancy giving you only two days' notice to That's prepare. That's the way it works. That's what an is inspection it really? is, Just yeah. two days. Well, I know, but you still need time to prepare those things because things happen. See, I was going to forgive you for a moment, just for a moment, because I thought you thought about it. I never thought you would do it. And also, you ruined all their work. <sighs> yeah, I find it. I cannot find any way to give you any salvation. That's two of us. You are unforgivable.